Peter and John join them in Samaria. Again, where is James? Even James, the brother of John. Acts doesn't know. Acts has a problem with the James character. In fact, the only time I think James really appears is when he gets killed. <clears throat> if you can, uh, if you, I'm talking about James, the so-called brother of John. Now, in my work, I don't think there is a James, the brother of uh, John. You say, well, boy, there isn't a James, the brother of John. No, I think that that is an overwrite. Part of the, I hate to say, shell game that the book of Acts is playing in order to downplay and write the other James out of the narrative. In other words, his place is taken is taken by James, but he's not the brother of Jesus that Acts is a very uh, concerned not to reveal to us and never does call James the brother of Jesus, does he? Never once in the whole book do we ever hear that James is the brother of Jesus. Now, there's got to be a reason for that. And why am I, in the 21st century, in Long Beach, California, the only person, as far as I'm I, uh, I am aware of that's ever raised these questions. <laughs> I mean, am I living in crowd cuckoo land? Uh, you know, uh, I think we have been, unfortunately. Now you say, well, that's well, not what we want to know about. Well, I think that's uh, fun to come to a university where people are asking questions that are new and original and different. So to my mind, that's an exciting thing. If I had teachers like that, I'd be thrilled. And, uh, you know, uh, the rest I can do myself. I can go hear my minister talk. I can go hear my rabbi talk. I can go hear my mom talk. I can read this book to myself. I don't need someone who just parrots this book to me. I, someone to raise interesting questions. That's a lot of fun. That's what college is all, up, is all about. So, I say, you know, once again, going to Samaria, where is James? And this picture of Simon, as we said last night, is, is, yeah, last time, is extremely odd. And what happens to Simon? We don't know. He just disappears from sight, the way a lot of other people just emerge and disappear and act like disembodied spirits. So the authors here are, they're worrisome as far as their historic, historical um, acumen and uh, sound judgment is concerned. And uh, Simon answered them, and makes a comment in 24, and then that's the end of it. And then in 25, and they preach the gospel in many villages and in, uh, of the Samaritans, and that's the end of it. That's the end of it. So that's the glue. Each episode in Acts has a certain glue that holds it together and then moves on to the next episode. That's the end of that narrational episode. It's always and they preached the word, or the churches grew, or 5,000 people were added to the community, and then we go on to the next thing. So it's a kind of a step situation, <coughs> whether, uh, you mean Samaria became Christian? Not to my knowledge. I never heard that Samaria became Christian at this time. So I mean, you know, I mean, where's the evidence for this? Did Samaria ever become Christian? I don't know. As far as I know, the Samaritans still have their own religion, even in the modern time, and it's not Christianity. So again, I have no, no idea what went on in Samaria, and I don't think this book knows either. We just accept, oh, Samaritans became Christians. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. There's no Christianity in Samaria at this time. Uh, you, you, you know, I mean, um, this is someone writing in Rome, or 2,000, 3,000 miles away, who actually knows less about the situation than someone today would know about the Middle East. And we don't know very much about the Middle East, frankly, uh, because we, they didn't even have the communications. It took them two or three months to get from here to Rome. <laughs> and then who knows what story that they developed in their brain. And, uh, you know, where's the written documents? Where's the Josephus on this issue? Josephus tells us Samaria became Christian, not to my knowledge. And he was there. He lived there. And uh, so, 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 what's going on here? Who knows? Next episode, 26. Philip. He's on his way, as we said last time, to Gaza, and he meets an Ethiopian eunuch. 
who's supposed to be the person over the treasury of a woman called Queen Kandakis from Ethiopia. And they're supposed to get to be Christians at this point. Now, I have to be honest with you again. I've read the question. There's no record that Ethiopians became Christians at this point in any place, in any document, anywhere. Now, we know that later on, Ethiopians did convert to Christianity, but that was around the 5th or 6th century A.D. There's no Queen Kandakis in Ethiopia at this time, or Candace. The, we know that the Queen of Sheba is an important character in the imagination of people's minds from the biblical story. We know all about her relations with King Solomon from the Bible and so on, and how she was interested. So I think some of this is drawn from that. But at this time, as we've been seeing from the documents we've been following, there is a conversion to Christianity or something re re resembling Christianity in northern Syria. There is a conversion to a kind of Judaism that isn't really totally Judaism. And that conversion is Queen Helen. And we also know from Queen Helen and her sources that we've now, you say, well, who's Queen Helen? Well, you should have read about Queen Helen in uh, Eusebius. She's also in Josephus, and she's in the Talmud. She's a very important character, and she made a big impression on everyone's minds. She was very wealthy, and she was very interested in the temple, and she gave the candelabra to the temple that the Romans took to Rome in their victory celebrations that's on the Arch of Titus today. We know that from um, Josephus, we know it from Talmudic sources. She also put a plaque in the, in the temple um, about the uh, suspected ad adulteress that you shouldn't accuse someone of adultery without proper proof. She put that in gold leaf in the temple courtyard. She was a very important convert to so-called Judaism. But in Josephus, it's quite clear that the conversion has a problem on circumcision. And we've already heard that circumcision is an issue in the letter to the Galatians. We know that James is the party of the circumcision, so-called, whatever that means. And Paul is a, has a big issue over circumcision in uh, several of his letters, particularly the letter to the Galatians, where he fulminates against it. Now, I'm not going to care if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. That doesn't matter to me at all. What matters to me is what these people were worried about at that time. And this was a big issue of, at that time between the Paul James party. Now something that most people don't realize and that I've discovered in my work is that the Romans were very worried about this at this time too. And